And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in your name, and he followed not, he didn't follow us, so we forbade him because he followed not us. Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is for us. He that is not against us is for us. Matthew 7, last one. Matthew 7, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ra ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have we cast out devils? And in your name done many wonderful works. I want to preach to you a little while this, from this thought. Followers fakers, and downright deceivers. Looking for the first position, that's where you're going. Are you listening? In my life, I have always, always, when it came to ministry or whatever, I was just like, God, you pick me or don't pick me. You choose me or don't choose me. You let me have that job or you don't want me to have that job. You do whatever you want to do, but I am not kicking down the door. I posted a little deal on Facebook. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm caving. Um, that said, if you want God to open or close your doors, get your hand off the handle, off the doorknob. Amen. So I've I've never spent any time ever. Ever. It's just like and Karen can tell you this from the start of ministry. Somebody say, Will you do this? Yep, I'll do that. And I went and done it. And then God would say, Will you do this? Yep, I'll do that. And it just works out so God puts you where he wants you. Amen? That's the way it works. The Bible says be sure your gift will make a way for you. If you're gifted to do something, it'll make a way for you. You don't, you don't need to kick down the door. You don't, need to, you, you don't need to do that. I am telling you, God will take care of it. All right? Jesus said if you're trying to be first, you're going to end up last. Quit trying to be first. And it doesn't matter if you're not first yet or you are first now. Uh, even if you're the head now, you still, are you listening? If your battle is to be the head, to be the first, then you're going to end up last. Your motive has to be, I serve where you put me. I'll do what you tell me. I'll do it the way you tell me. Are you listening? Amen. Well, praise God, all six of you. I'm glad. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils. <laughs> what? Okay. So Jesus takes a child. He brings him in the middle, then he sits down and takes him in his arms, and he says, starts talking about the children, and he says, you know, if you receive one of the children, it goes all this deal. And John's response to the child is, we saw a guy casting out devils. <laughs> do, you, do you think about, do you ever think about the stuff you read? 
I went back over and over and over again. I'm like, what? What? John, what are you talking about? How, how did we move from talking about children to casting out some guy you saw casting out devils downtown? I'll tell you how we got there. The word Jesus used for children, he uses the child. He takes a child, a real child. He takes a child in his arms, and he uses him as a metaphor for followers. The word literally means, it can mean child, it can mean that, but it, uh, or a half-grown uh, male or female, half-grown kid, but it also means immature Christian. So Jesus takes this kid and he says, and he starts using him as a metaphor for one of his followers, and John thinks, uh-oh, we kind of did something with one of your children. Are you listening? And so John's going to get, you know how you try to get ahead of the story? <laughs> Nobody ever does that. You never, you think, oh, I messed up, so I better get out and get ahead of this. That's what John's doing. He's getting ahead. He's like, Jesus? Now, Jesus? Okay, we saw this guy downtown, and he was casting out devils. But listen, we just told him to stop because he ain't, he ain't one of us. He ain't part of us. I mean, this is a pretty elite team here, Jesus. And I mean, we, we you know, when it comes, I, let's just face it, when it comes to kingdom kids, we're, I mean, we're, the, we're pretty much top notch. We are prophetic and powerful. And by the way, we're the, I mean, we, I, we know Jesus. I mean, some of y'all are pretenders. You, you, you talk, but we know that we sleep with, in the same places he sleeps in. We walk. And so we told him, listen, man, you, you can't be doing that. You. And Jesus says, don't tell him that. Don't do that. Because if somebody's cast working miracles in my name, they're not likely to talk bad about me. Are you listening? And if he's casting, if he's doing works in my name, then he's for us, not against us. But see, we have so much competition, so much church stuff and struggles and ministry this and ministry that. We got so much stuff going on that we fight all the time. Well, there, I don't, we, got the, we got the real Holy Ghost down here where we're at. Like he's a commodity. Like you own him. Really? Are you serious? Jesus said, this is pretty simple. If they're doing great works in my name, leave them alone. Stop it. Don't, don't, don't call them out and tell them they're this or they're that. Listen, this is, this is, this, and this is something that, that I dealt with even on Facebook this, this week. I grew up in a house. Now, listen, my, my leaders weren't, weren't bad people or anything like that. But the teaching of the day was to look at a sinner, and if they didn't, they come down and, get, and, and say a sinner's prayer at your altar. If they didn't get up and walk right, act right, talk right, everything just perfect, everything drop off as soon as they stood up, then we begin to point fingers at them and say, oh, that's not of God, and this is not of God, and they should. And so we drove more people into the arms of Satan than we could Hold in the house of God. Are you listening to me? Church, it is not our job to do that. That's not. What do, are you listening? Followers sometimes are not part of your group. They don't dress like you. They don't look like you. They don't talk like you. They don't sing like you. And that's okay if they're not part of your group as long as they're doing what Jesus said to do. Oh. Now, this is not my word. You can get mad at me if you want. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. Jesus said, don't do that. Leave him alone. He's doing things, great things in my name. Leave him alone. He ain't got to come to our house for tea and crumpets. Are you listening? He didn't get invited Well, they weren't at the Christmas party, so I, I'd say the Holy Ghost just fell out of favor with them.
Well, you know, we had a bonfire the other night studying the Word of God. They didn't come. I'm pretty sure they're backslidden. We invited, we invited them to camp meeting, and they said, well, we, that place is crazy. We're not going up there. Are you listening? Now, I don't think we're cra well, we're a little crazy, but we're not crazy crazy. But there are people who are of God who do great exploits who will never come and see us. Amen? And that's okay. That's okay. In fact, if all we got to whip the devil is just right here, I'm sorry, we're going to need a bigger army than that. Are you with me? We're going to need a bigger army. So followers, Jesus said, followers don't have to be with a certain group. They're still mine if they're doing exploits in my name. Does that make sense? I'm using his words here. All right? Let's go on to the next. And the followers, as far as I'm going to get, I ain't going to get to the, all the rest. So this is a series. Ta-da. I just produced a series. Amen. <laughs> Here we go. What's this? Good fruit, bad fruit, Matthew 7. And he talks about beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, be inward, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now listen to me. This is real and it's true. And, and, and you know, the more... I actually started working on this message, which God knows everything. So, you know, I started putting these scriptures together three months ago. Now, I thought I was going to entitle it just Antichrist or Spirit of the Antichrist or something like that. I, I assumed that that's where I was going with it. But, and although that it will be the message of the series, I begin to see how important it is to get these things right. Because our kids and our grandkids and the people we love, they're all trying to maneuver this world, and it's a mess. It's a mess. Now, listen, it's always been a mess since Adam fell, but nowadays, really? I've seen a deal. Son, you'll have to cut this out. This will be very offensive. Somebody posted a deal on my on the, sent it to me on Facebook the other day, and it said, my generation, we had Wonder Woman, and this generation, we wonder if it's a woman, and it had this. <laughs> Amen. It had this guy dressed up like Wonder Woman. This is a deal. I mean, our kids got to deal with this. That's right. You have to maneuver these waters, so it is important. It's very important. And when we hear things, we get bits and pieces of information from people that say, beware of this or beware of that. I, I don't think you should, you should just throw any of it away. You should listen. It matters. It's important that we get it right. Amen? We, we, in these things, discussion is fine. Amen? Because how else are we going to figure it out? And so over the last few months, it's just like one thing after another after another keeps cropping up. It's like, you know, is this guy for real? That person, this lady, is she, you know, and, 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 and it being pastor, I get this. You know, I, I get texts consistently. I mean, every month probably I've, since I've been pastoring, I get a phone call or a text or something from somebody say, well, you know, I, you know I'm, I've heard this guy or heard this lady or this whatever. Are they real or this one real? And the, and the reality is, is that you you go, you do the best that you can, all right? Because it's hard to know what somebody's motives are. So you look at their life, and if their life is tracking, amen, then you say, you know what, God, I'm going to take the meat, the stuff that you send me through these people or whatever, and I'm going to spit out the bones because nobody's perfect. 
Newsflash. You ain't either. You're part of nobody's perfect. I, I ain't either. I knew that when I got up this morning. And I'm going to know it when I go to bed tonight. Amen? So we don't need to act like we are. Amen? It's important. It's critical that we get this right. And I'm, I'm, I know I'm not hurrying, but I... Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. That's what I just said. How do, how do I know? Look at their life. Look at their life. Is good fruit coming from their life? Or is there always an excuse why it can't? See, m most people, once you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, church, most people, most people, not everybody, but most people don't come off as maniacal, devious. There's a few. But usually after you talk to them, they're just come off kind of like real people trying to do whatever they think is right or best or whatever. The reality is, though, is that many of us are trying to do what is best, and it ain't best. Are you listening? Now, listen, you've got to be an idiot if you're doing what's not best and you know it. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> if, oh, boy, better say that a different way. There's about... 15 people out there looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Uh. <laughs> we're wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in your name, and in your name we've cast out devils. And in your name, done many wonderful works. And the next passage says, and Jesus will say, I didn't know you. I didn't know you. I didn't know what you're talking about. I didn't know you. So this proves. And see, it gets a little confusing because the whole chapter is about good fruit and bad fruit. Really? I mean, that's what it is. I mean, it's, the, the, the whole passage is about good fruit and bad fruit. He goes through there saying a bad tree can't produce good fruit, and a good tree can't produce bad fruit. Is that not what he says? Then turns right around and says, they're going to say, we prophesied and we did good fruit. And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. So something is missing here. Do you see? So what's the problem? Well, apparently what they think is good fruit isn't good fruit. Apparently what they think is prophesying isn't prophesying. Maybe they're doing more prophesying than prophesying. Or maybe their prophesying all comes out of here and their opinion I heard a lot of people prophesy out of opinion. Amen? Amen. I, I, I had a conversation yesterday with a young lady in this church, and I won't say who, but somebody came up to her one time in an altar, and basically, just out of their own spirit, out of the way they think, started saying, thus saith the Lord. That'll mess people up. Amen? Amen? So apparently there's a situation where there's people who prophesy and do works that they think are good, but they aren't. And Jesus is going to say, I, I, don't, I, didn't, I never knew you. Are you listening? So what do followers do? They produce good fruit. Now listen, I, I'm going to run out of time, and I'll try to get in. I'll, 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 I'll try to lay this out a little better in, 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 in Sundays to come. But good fruit is good fruit. It's just good fruit. If what some listen, I don't care how anointed someone seems, if they are causing division, 
Jesus said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That is people thinking they're doing good fruit but dividing. This One of the first things that came up five months ago, that's exactly what it was about. It was division. It was causing all kinds of, of trouble, all kinds of stuff that, that as pastor I was working out, having to deal with people being hurt here and hurt there. And this person the whole time touted one convert as proof this was of God. And I'm thinking, you got one, I got 150 that I'm trying to settle back down. Oh, but Jesus left the 99, went after the one. That was the proof. He didn't leave the 99 to go to hell. He left the 99 because they were safe in the field. Are you listening? They were being watched. They were being taken care of. And he went and got the, nine, the one out of the 99, and guess what he did? He brought them back to the group. Are you listening? So in the end, in the end, how do we know if it's a true follower? How can we tell? I'm telling you, the fruit doesn't just bear you. Listen, I don't care what situation it is. You can always say, well, this person... You know, they got happy or they got healed or whatever. You can always point somewhere something to something good that happened. That's not how you tell. Are you listening? The occasional miracle the Bible even warns about. The occasional convert Jesus talked about. He said, you'll chase one down, make him a convert, and then make him twice the son of hell you are. Are you listening? How do you tell then? How do we know? Look and see the body of work, what they are doing. Is it good? I'm not saying anybody's perfect, but is it good? Do they help more than they're hurting? Are they blessing the kingdom more than they're taking away from it? This is how Jesus said, this is how your Bible says to look. Are you listening? I got to go. 1223. Give me this last one and I'm, I'm going to stop. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether or not they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Here it is. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. This is how you tell. Now you listen to me. This is what your Bible says. This is how you know if it's a spirit of God or the spirit of Antichrist or the spirit of, of, of Satan. This is how you know. He says, because many false prophets are gone out into the world, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that has all their stuff straight don't have anything wrong with them. They're all perfect. Never say a bad thing. Never do a bad thing. Never do it. That's, it didn't say any of that. It says every spirit that confesses that Christ came in the flesh is of God. Now listen. Flesh here is not what you think it is. And I'm going to close right here. It's not what you think it is because even the Muslims say that Jesus came in bodily flesh. Okay? And we know they're not of God. Are you listening? So what's he talking about? He's talking about this. He says that Jesus comes in the flesh, that Jesus comes in, that this is a house of clay, that when I get saved, something is removed. Behold, I can become a brand new creature. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ comes into your heart and you become the temple of the Holy Ghost, that is of God. So just watch what they say and think about it. Because if you go and look, all the other major religions, none of them say 
that Jesus comes into your heart lives within you. None of them. They all profess he's a good guy, he's a good teacher, he'll help your mind, you can meditate, you can whatever, but none of them will confess that he comes in and lives in you. And that's what he's talking about. So listen, if you're wondering and there's some ministry out there or whatever and you're wondering if they're of God, they may have all kinds of problems, they may have all kinds of hang-ups, whatever, but if they are out there preaching the word that Jesus Christ will come in your life, come into this house, house and save you, then they are preaching the gospel, and people ought to realize that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Amen? Listen, and I close right here. If you'll listen to me, this will make some sense to you to make your life a whole lot easier. Because we got too many people running around, Holy Ghost police, deciding who's right and who's wrong. Are you listening? Deciding who's of God and who's not of God. This is ridiculous. Why are you, what, why? Really? Now think about it for a minute. People, as my kids are growing up, it was, there was always some and, and, and what kicked off this, this train of thought here, what I'm about to talk about here is, is you know, which, you know, every, every, everybody probably already knows, whatever, is the train of thought about Kanye West, whether or not he's saved or not saved. I have no idea. I have no idea. But here's what I do know. I've been reading testimonies. I've been reading testimonies. And they're impressive. People's lives change, and I'm talking about saved. Giving up their drugs and their habits and their addictions. And, and so in the end, what do, you, what do you say then? Are we going to do what we did where we hammer someone so hard? Because right now, I can tell you, the world doesn't want him because he's messing up and singing are you listening? And part of the church is rejecting him. So where do you go? Now listen, I'm not a, I'm just telling you. I, this is one recent illustration. When my kids grew up, this was a battle all the time. Some celebrities always getting saved. Somebody's, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's a battle all the time. The church I grew up in, if you didn't come to our church, Profess the way we profess, and only sing the songs we sang, you weren't saved. That's the world I grew up in. Right? I mean, most of the Baptists wasn't even going. Unless they were closet Holy Ghost people that spoke in tongues. Oh, somebody say amen now. We were so incredibly judgmental. Amen. And it's important to know who to listen to because followers of Christ want to know more about Christ. We want to be in on the things that are about Christ, and we don't want to have nothing to do with the things that aren't. Amen? So it's important. I'm just saying if you spend very much time being the Holy Ghost police, you won't have time to do the job God called you to do.